Hello everyone, there's been a lot of questions about cameras in Game Creator this week, so I thought I'd throw together a quick tutorial. I'm going to quickly go through every camera motor. You can see I've just got a scene set up here with some basic world stuff. We're working in HDRP today. Uh, I've got a sphere that's moving around the scene. I've got an object that I'm just going to use later for demonstrating some actions. We've got our main camera and I've got all the camera controllers set up and ready to go. Now you will notice that the camera controllers and the camera are not parented to each other, nor are any of the controllers parented to the player in any way, because we do not want to do that with most of the camera controllers. Some of them you can use that way, but most of them you don't want to. The first thing I want to go through is just the camera component itself. So we've just got a standard Unity camera with all that entails. When you create a camera in Game Creator, it's going to add this hook camera component, which it uses to talk to the camera. And it's also going to add this camera controller, which is where you put your motor in. And if you want to change camera motors, that's what you'd be referring to. Now, it also has this position duration and rotation duration. What they are is how fast the camera responds. So I'll just quickly change this to adventure camera. Oh, we already got it set there. And I'm just going to hit play. So if we have a look down, down here in our game window, you can see I can move around normally as I could with the adventure camera, zoom in and out, all that sort of thing. I've obviously just got my uh, player here running around on a path between some markers so that I don't have to actually control it. Now, if I change these, what it'll do is change how fast the camera responds to, to doing things. So if we make it zero now, the rotation and zoom are a little bit faster, very snappy. Uh, so when you want to switch straight to a camera with no messing about, those are the settings you want. You want to put it on zero. Point one's good normally because it's a, it's a good balance for smoothness. Now, I'll just to give you the opposite, if we put these on one, you will see now, I'm not touching anything at the moment. You can see how the camera is taking a long time to catch up. Now that we've just discussed that little bit, let's have a look at the individual controllers. So we'll have a look at the adventure camera. And I've just gone now and I've selected both the adventure camera and the main camera component so that you can see the view cone of the camera and what the camera is doing in the uh, editor window here. So if I hit play, you can see that what this camera actually does is basically connects to and follows whatever you've told it to follow. Usually we're going to use this on the player. By default, it allows us to orbit around the character and to zoom in and out from the character. And it will also avoid obstacles. So if I try and go below the floor here, it's hitting the floor, not going under it. If you come too close or set the minimum of the camera too close, sometimes you will start clipping into objects, but that's that's mainly, you see you get a bit there, that's mainly what the adventure camera is for. And if we take a quick look at the adventure camera itself, we've got the initial direction. So what is it looking at when we start? Normally, we're going to have that be the target direction, which in most cases is going to be the player. How far we want to offset the camera, so it's offset by a Y of 1. So this character is taller than that, so you might want to change that to 2 or 1.7 or something like that. Uh, how far the pivot is offset, these are all just basically offsets of, of where it's going to sit in relation to the character. Do you want to be allowed to orbit around the character or not? how sensitive is it going to be so when we uh when we orbit how quickly is it going to rotate so in combination with that previous setting on the camera itself you can really adjust that maximum pitch how far can we look up and down do we want to allow zoom so will the mouse will scroll us in and out and how far do we go when we're doing that um so what do we start at how quickly do we do it how sensitive is it to that? So how, how fast, basically, is it going to do it in terms of one click of the mouse wheel? How far is it going to go? The limitations, how close I can go, how far back I can go. And that can also be done with this slider here. Avoid wall clips. So that's avoiding obstacles. How far do we want to avoid obstacles? What layers do we want to avoid when we're 
avoiding obstacles? And do we want the camera to automatically reposition behind the character if there's no input? How long does that take? And how quickly does it go? Now, if we switch over to first person camera and just play the scene now, we can see that we are attached to the player. The player has been hidden because that's one of the options that I've set in this controller. I've told it to hide the camera and he's just doing his business. We all know what a first person camera does. The settings here are basically the same. Where do we actually want the camera? In this case, set it to, which for most humanoids is probably a bit high. Most, most humans are about 160 centimeters, so 1 1.6, 1 1.7. How sensitive it is again, max pitch, up and down. Rotate input. So when we, uh, when we try and move, is it just by moving the mouse? Do we need to hold down a mouse button? And if so, which mouse button do we need to hold? You might think of that in games as free look or mouse look. Um, and again, a smoothing on that. Do you want to use head bobbing? If so, how often does it head bob and how far does it head bob and in what direction? And then we have the model manipulator. Do we want to do nothing? Do we want to hide our model or do we want to go to stiff spine? Do not use stiff spine. It's stupid. Then we have fixed camera and this is essentially uh, a security camera, like a fixed security camera. So we can see here, I've got the fixed camera set up over here and I'll show you what it's doing. It's just looking at current direction. We can give it a target, so we can say look at the player or look at a variable or anything like that, but let's just use it at its default, which is look at current direction. So all this camera is gonna do is sit here, just staring at what it's staring at. If I change this to say player, we will see that it's gonna stay in a fixed position but it will rotate. So this is your follow camera. Um, and obviously you could animate this controller if you wanted to say, look back and forth as a security camera. So fixed camera is very simple. It just sits there and pretends to be a camera without doing anything else. Follow camera is basically designed to move along with an object. So if we go into our follow camera here, you can see again, the camera is following the player around, but it's not got any rotation or any of the other stuff that say the adventure camera does. It will always essentially maintain the same offset from the thing that it's following. So this is a good one if you want to say, do a third person view, uh, particularly if you say you were doing a uh, an aerial, like an arcade combat simulator, you might put a fixed camera behind the plane or staring at the plane or something like that, just so you've got a, a fixed offset there. Again, very simple controls. What are we stuck to? In this case, we're stuck to the player. What is the offset from the player? What do we want to look at? And any offset we want to do there. Now, railway camera is probably one of the more complex cameras. And again, I'm going to just select the camera and then select the main camera so we can see what it's doing. You can see we've got this interesting little thing on the ground here, which is basically the points at which this camera is going to try to stay within. So the camera is only going to move along this line and it's going to try and look in this direction. Now it won't only look in that direction, but that's its preferred place to look. So if I play this now, and if you look at both both areas of what's going on. So you can see it's only gonna move back and forth along this line. And when the player goes outside it, it is looking at them, but you'll see that as soon as he comes within that area, it's gonna go, yep, I'd love to look this way. And in this case, yeah, I'd love to look this way. So it's essentially a waiting in that area of, I would rather look within this cone, but I will look outside it sort of more flexibly you can see you've got a whole grid of points. Essentially, this is where all the four points are. So you'll see that the camera endpoint here, say, moves. You can move the all that. Now, target camera is basically a combination between fixed and follow camera. What it does is it allows you to be attached to something and look at something else. So the follow camera is attached to this sphere here. And if we press play, 
you can see we are following, and this is one where you might want to set that offset to zero so that it actually follows properly. Um, you can see that it's not quite keeping up with the uh, with the sphere driving around. But this is a good one if you wanted to make something like a camera on top of a car or something like that, or a target camera. If you Again, if you're making a flight combat simulator, you might want to have a target camera on the plane. You can see it's looking at the player, but it's happily moving around with the object that we told it to. So if we just go into the target camera there, you can see that we've got an anchor distance. How far do we want to be from the sphere in this case and a horizontal offset? And then we've got what anchor are we following? We're following this sphere around. How far do we want to sit away from that to start with? These are kind of more of a uh, as we go offset, whereas this is where we sort of where we start. Uh, and a target is the player, and again, an offset for the player or whatever your target happens to be. And we've got the last one, which is the tween camera, which is probably the least useful camera in my opinion. It's only really good for cinematics. And what the tween camera does is simply move between two places. So I'm going to show you it's set up first. So we've got the tween camera. It's going from here to here. It's going to take two seconds to do that journey. Just so for demo purposes, let's make that five seconds. I've just given it some easing. So it's going to slow in and slow out and it's looking at the player. So if we press play now, all we're going to do is move across while looking at the player. So we're just slowly moving across, moving across, moving across, moving across. And that's it. That's all the tween camera is going to do. So that's pretty much cameras. I'll just quickly show you. I've got this game object set up with actions and I've already set, I've already searched for camera. So these are the camera actions that are available. You can change the field of view of the camera. You have all the individual cameras have a settings action. So if you want to change anything about those settings, the offsets, all that kind of thing, you can do that. You've got change camera, change camera from variable. So if you had a list of cameras, say had a list of security cameras or something in a game, you could use a, a list variable to, to switch through those cameras. Uh, change camera just lets you switch from one camera to another directly. Change the camera culling mask. So what is the camera seeing? Camera damping, that's that initial value we talked about. So how um, how quickly is the camera following the target around if it's that kind of camera. So if you were switching to say you wanted a fixed camera to follow something around the world, you might change that to zero so that it keeps up. Or if you wanted a more interesting, smooth, psychedelic look, you might jack that up. Um, you know, if you didn't want the camera to say you're doing a third person game and the character was drugged or something, you might change that camera damping to give them just the feeling of things being a bit more loose. Rotate the camera, do a shake, do a lengthy shake. So burst is just, you know, shake for a second. If we just have a quick look here, you know, how rough is the shaking? How big is the shaking? How long is the shaking? You know, do we do position, rotation, or both? And then if we take a look at the uh, shake camera sustain, this is just going to happen until we play a stop shaking. So those are the actions there, pretty straightforward. And that is the basics of cameras in the game creator. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask them in the comments, um, and I will try to answer them if I can.